So I recently turned a nice little guitar pick dish on the lathe this week. It looked quite good but I asked my missus if it could be improved somehow and she suggested adding a star inlay. Being a fan of Milliput Epoxy I thought I'd give it a go but it would have to be something that I did at the CNC. I'd put a few pictures of the finished dish on some of the forums and a few people asked how I'd made it so I decided to put together this little tutorial. I've designed it using Vectric CNC software and it's a really easy project to make and it could be easily adapted to have any number of designs or logos engraved onto it. So the first thing I do on opening Vectric is to go and create a new file. The dish is going to be 110mm in diameter and the maple I'll be using is 16mm thick so I can easily input these figures. Job type is going to be single sided and I'll start with a slate size of 150mm by 150mm and a thickness of 16mm. Z0 position is going to be the material surface and like all my other projects the X and Y datum position is always bang in the middle at 0, 0. Modelling resolution isn't too important at this stage so I'm ready to go and hit OK. Now the disc design is really simple and literally takes just a couple of minutes to design it. I'm going to create a series of circles from the create a vector section and click draw circle. Now I'm working from the centre so I can leave the centre point at 0, 0. The outside diameter of the dish is 110mm, so I input 110 making sure that the diameter is checked and hit create which gives me the outside vector of the dish. I'm going to be creating a small lip around the edge so whilst the draw circle vector window is open I can input 100 and create the vector for the lip in the same way that I created for the outside vector. I'll also be adding a small circle around the star so I can create another circle vector in the same way, this time at 77.5mm. All three circle vectors are now done so I can click on close to bring me back to the main page. The final vector I need to add is the star. This is so easy to do in Vectric and all I need to do is head back to the create vector section and click on draw star. Now I've already done a test run so I know exactly what figures to input into the boxes. I'll be making a star with 5 points so the number of points is set to 5. The centre point is still 0, 0. The outer radius is 30mm and the inner radius percentage is 40. Clicking create now gives me the star vector on the slate and clicking close brings me back to the main view. From here all I need to do is create the toolpaths. Now I'm not going into too much detail here as everyone uses different methods but very quickly here's a run through of some of my settings and depth of cuts for the dish. So firstly clicking the switch to toolpath commands brings up the toolpath window on the right hand side. First thing I do is double check my material setup just in case at some point I've altered the material that I'll be using. I'm using 16mm thick maple so I can type 16mm or Z equals which will automatically set it to the parameters that I set earlier. Everything else looks fine so I just click OK. Now looking at my circle vectors the first thing I'm going to be doing is creating the recess for the dish. In toolpath operating I'm going to select pocket toolpath. I'll start with the start depth at 0 but I'll cut at depth of 6mm to give me this more recess in the dish. To speed up the cut I'll be using my 8mm wheel and tools down cut spiral for a neat finish. One thing I will need to do for a better finish is to make sure that my raster direction matches the grain direction of the piece that I'm cutting. This ensures that I get the neatest cut possible otherwise I can be left with lines that can be difficult to sand out later on. Now I'm happy with that so I'll name the path and click calculate making sure to select the vector first. Then a quick preview and that looks good so I close that section and click onto the 2D tab and click the slate to deselect the vector. Once again I'll use the pocket tool path for the star but because I've already removed 6mm of material for the recess I need to start my cut at 6mm and have a 3mm cut depth. I also need a smaller cutter so I'll select one that's only 3.175mm wide. Now I'm happy with the rest of my settings so I can calculate that toolpath after renaming it and selecting the vector which is so easy to forget sometimes. Then a quick preview as before. If I want to see what the star might look like with colour I can select a toolpath colour 
and the preview will show the toolpath with a selected colour which can help give me an idea of how it might look when they fill with epoxy. Back in the 2D view it's now time to cut the circle that surrounds the star. I'll choose a profile toolpath and use the same 3.175mm cutter. I just need to make sure that it starts cutting at 6mm and that the depth is just 3mm like the star. And the machine vector needs to be set to on so that the tool cuts along the vector and not to one side. Then it's calculate and preview once more making sure that the toolpath colour is changed to match the star. Then it's close and back to the 2D view for the final toolpath. This is going to be another profile cut but this time I'll start at 0mm which is the top of the maple and a cut depth of 16mm to ensure it cuts all the way through. I'll also need to select the 8mm cutter again and set the machine vector to cut on the outside to give me the 110mm diameter. Now we will be adding tabs to the piece but just to make the preview more accurate I'll skip that bit for now and preview all toolpaths so you can see the finished piece in the simulation. Double clicking the outer piece of the cut material makes it disappear and we're left with the dish as it would look when machined. And I can drag it in all different directions to see how it will look. So I'll go back and add the tabs, save the files to my pen drive and it's time to cut the piece at the CNC machine. So everything's ready and screwed to a sacrificial piece of MDF. The 8mm cutter is already in place and everything's centred and Z0'd. First cut will be the recess of 6mm and as you can see I've made sure that the grain direction is running in the same way as the raster direction. Next cut is the star and I've left the dust hood off so you can see the cutter in action. The up cut lifts up a lot of the fibres but these can easily be sanded away afterwards. Then the next cut is the inner circle surrounding the star using the same small cutter. Then finally I switch back to the 8mm down spiral for a neat finish and the duster goes back on for this. The piece is then removed and the tabs cut off. I use a saw and fine tune with a sharp chisel as sanding can sometimes leave unwanted scratches. Then it gets a pass over my miniature round over cutter. Last but not least I then add the milliput and once it's set it gets a good sanding and a coat of wax. And here's the finished piece and I don't think it looks too bad and hopefully now I'll not lose as many guitar picks now that I've got somewhere to store them. Prior to making the videos on YouTube I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. Unfortunately an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with and after years of failed therapy I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. 
To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interest and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there's additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support.